Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with another very detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for July the 22nd, 2023 at around 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. In this video, we are going to be talking about mainly on Invest 95L, and we're also watching an area of interest, the AOI that is circled in green, that's also headed potentially into the main development region where we might have to start watching that pretty closely. Taking a look at the very latest visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan or tropicaltidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to that website where you can view these very detailed, intricate, uh, visible satellite images all for free so big shout out goes to dr levi cowan making that possible so we can see what we have on the map here is we have three areas to watch in the atlantic of course dawn is not going to be a huge problem at all to any interests on land but if you are boating if you're on a cruise liner this could mean something to you maybe some rough seas maybe some breezy winds out of a hurricane dawn and yes it is our first hurricane of the atlantic hurricane season and it is now our of course our fourth named storm since june the first i'm just going to round up since the beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season. And then, of course, we have Invest 95L. That is going to be a big threat to the windward and leeward islands in the Caribbean in the next couple of days because that is producing some deep convection, heavy rainfall, strong winds are anticipated as that moves off towards the west and west-northwest at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. And then last but not least, we also have another area to watch or area of interest, AOI, that's what I put it in as an acronym, area of interest coming off of Africa. So I'm telling you folks, this is mid to late July and we have a month yet to come before the typical ramp up of the Atlantic hurricane season. And I still believe we have a really busy period on our hands, especially in late August. All right, so three areas to watch in the midst of this blowing dust coming off of Africa. So taking a look at the National Hurricane Center here, there is Hurricane Dawn. Winds at 75 miles an hour. It is now our first hurricane of the Atlantic hurricane season since it began on June 1st, and it is our fourth named storm. Just showing you folks, we have a July hurricane. Doesn't happen very often, right? It does, but not very often. Okay, 75 mile an hour winds, central pressure 988 millibars, moving to the north at 12 miles an hour. And then, of course, we got our area of interest in the next seven days here, impacting the leeward and windward islands with a medium chance of tropical development. Okay, yesterday it had a 70% chance of tropical development in seven days. That has been downed to now 60%, which is better than 70%, but still, a tropical wave is going to cause some problems. We already know that. Heavy rain, strong winds, thunderstorms, some rough surf. Just prepare for that kind, those kind of conditions, because just because it's this doesn't mean it's going to be, eh, it's just a little way, we're not, we're going to ignore it. No, you still have to get prepared for some heavy rain and some gusty winds. So now we're going to take a look now, since we looked at that, okay, we're going to be looking at our models because there is more activity coming off of Africa that I think it's a good idea that we talk about. But first of all, I got to make my mouse cursor a little smaller here so you all can see just perfectly fine. So, as we go forward here, um, there is our tropical wave there, Invest 95L, as it moves closer to the Leeward and Windward Islands. There is Hurricane Dawn on the Euro, being well modeled, actually. The Euro has been kind of forecasting a hurricane, and it looks like it's kind of going with the Euro right now. And then here comes our next tropical wave coming off of Africa yet again. I'm telling you, folks mid july late july not supposed to be this busy it happens once in a while but it just means of what's to come i think august we're gonna have a lot of activity especially the second half of august into late august into early september during the typical ramp up i think we're gonna have a lot to contend with so going now 
putting this into motion. By the way, what you're looking at here is the the three different perimeters. Uh, we're looking at the vorticity signature. So that's what we're looking for on the Euro model. On these global models is that vorticity, that spin at 5,000 feet. And then, of course, you have these height line contours. Those are the black lines that you see here, thicknesses in the atmosphere. And these wind barbs, okay, that indicate which way the wind is coming from, right? So it's coming in out of the northeast at around 20 to 30 knots at 5,000 feet. This is my favorite layer of the atmosphere. So putting this into motion all the way into the next, put this out to day three. And you can see there is the vorticity signature of Invest 95L. The Euro still thinks it's not going to develop into anything substantial. And I can see why that is from the NHC. They have kind of lowered their chances. But still, do not ignore this, folks. This could surprise a lot of us. Just be aware of that. 60% chance is a fairly high chance. It's not super high like 90 or 100%, but a 60% chance is a medium chance. By day four and day five, there is the tropical wave there over the central Caribbean. Again, really anemic. Nothing too substantial on the euro with this tropical wave here. In the main development region, I mean, it's barely there. I mean... Barely any vorticity being concentrated with it. And it looks like that is going to develop into something. We will have to watch it closely. This is out to day 7. You can see a little bit. A little bit of a footprint of some vorticity. Just a hair. It's a little bit of a tropical wave there. And then maybe another one coming off of Africa. So I just want to point this out that... The fact that we're seeing these tropical waves holding together at least through this area in the main development region and they could develop later on is something that we have to monitor in days and weeks to come because some of these tropical waves could are capable of developing into tropical storms or hurricanes eventually. And then you can see on the Euro model out to day 10, yep, there is a signature of a very strong tropical wave not necessarily a tropical depression or a storm but that is a footprint that we look for on global models like this from the euro showing that and then you can see some westerly winds here right off the coast of western africa the the, um, the extension of the intertropical convergence zone helping to get some vorticity going so yeah, I think we got to watch this. We really do. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how this all evolves. Do any of these pieces of energy kind of congeal or kind of congregate into something, into a storm? We just don't know yet. But what we do know is the pattern is slowly becoming favorable now for the Atlantic, for at least these tropical waves to at least capable of producing some impetus for tropical development. So when we look at our relative humidity plot here, I'm just going to go through this rather quickly. Um, kind of uh, self-explanatory. These brown colors here indicate drier air in the deep layer from 700 millibars to 300 millibars. The air is not moist at all. Saharan dust, shear, that sort of thing that makes conditions really unfavorable. These green plots here are a lot of moisture. So the air is more wet. There's more moisture, more latent heat release. We got more convection going on. And typically, that means we can get these tropical waves forming. So let's go forward. Let's see with what our tropical wave does here, right? You can see right there, lots of dry air surrounding the system. So that's why I think it's probably not going to develop into anything substantial, but still going to bring impacts. You can see the green there. So some enhanced convection some gusty winds, you know, some lightning strikes, that sort of thing. And then going all the way out to day 10, we can see more drier air coming into the picture with another strong tropical wave. Here's a tropical wave here. Here's a tropical wave here for day 9 and 10. So, yeah, it's all a matter of will the Atlantic start waking up? Are we beginning to see the beginnings of that taking place? That shall be seen. So now looking at Invest 95L model track guidance, 
Now, please note up here on the top right side, Dr. Levi Cowan does a very good job at um, iterating this, that do not use this map to make decisions. Please do not. Okay, I want to kind of um, advertise that out to you all. Please seek official info from the National Hurricane Center or your local weather office. Please. Okay, spaghetti plots cannot be 100% relied on because we already have seen this trend southward. Remember how some of the spaghetti plot was up here? Look what all has happened. They have moved further south. Will we see the southerly trend still continue? That is to be seen. But I'll tell you what right now, there's not as many models going this far out now indicating that this would likely become anything interesting. That is because, of, again, the dry air and shear is impacting the system for the time being. And models think that it really is going to struggle to develop. But yeah, we still have a few, more than a few models out here that could indicate we might get a tropical depression at the very most. That's a look at the spaghetti plot. Let's take a look at our intensity forecast on Dr. Levi Cowan's page here on the spaghetti plot guidance. So we can see definitely a downward trend here. None of the models really going for a hurricane anymore like we were thinking before. Most likely now for a tropical storm. But due to the consensus here based on the euro and based on the current analysis that I have looked at, my intensity forecast is being lowered. And now I do not see this become a tropical storm at all. In fact, I only see some slight strengthening with this system and then I do forecast it's going to weaken. Again, a tropical depression at the very most here with winds up to 35 miles an hour. And we're not expecting this to become a tropical storm for the time being. Again, okay, what I just said does not mean it won't become a tropical storm. It just means the data that I've looked at, my opinion, is calling for this to not really strengthen very much. But again, there will be impacts i want you all to leave a comment in the section below right now letting me know that you acknowledge that there will be impacts in the caribbean so that way at least you understand with what i mean okay because big or small strong or weak it doesn't matter very much all that matters is you're gonna get some rain wind and thunderstorms and some high surf potentially with this so now the fact that we now have dawn as a hurricane where are we ranking at on this season's climatological uh, data for the North Atlantic or for the Atlantic hurricane season? Well, let's take a look. We're ranking in eighth place right now. I mean, we were down here in 13th, 12th place. We're now ahead of 2018. We yet have to get past 2022, but we are going to get close to that. I mean, we're not far behind uh, about that at all. But we're ahead some of the other busier seasons, like 2021 was a fairly busy season. So we're ahead of that, and we're ahead of 1995, okay, before El Nino really kicked in, all right? So what this is telling us is we're, 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 this is quite busy for this time of the year. I mean, it doesn't seem like it because it's not supposed to be, okay? I mean, we haven't began the big crawl up to the very top here, and we're already up to 14.62 ace points, which is quality over quantity, and the average for this time of the year is 6.74, and we're ranking in eighth place. So hopefully that made sense. We're right on the top of the cone here of the standard deviation of about, um, about a 1% from the mean. So if we kind of stay up at this level, we could have a very busy season. I mean, 160, 175 ace points cannot be ruled out. Some agencies want to go all the way up to 200 plus um, ace points, which would be a an extraordinary season if it actually ends up being the case. So now as far as where are we at for the time of the year that we're in, we are roughly right here. So my arrow points there, illustrating that we are really not supposed, oops, I bumped the mic, we're not supposed to have a very busy season this time of the year. And we're going up to here uh, in the next month or so. So giving us an idea that we have a long way to go. 
So now take a look at our sea surface temperatures. The Gulf is on fire. No, it's literally not on fire, but you get you you understand what my analogy is. It is just extremely warm. My idiom, it's an idiom, not an analogy necessarily. 31 Celsius all throughout here. I mean, this is cooking. This is warm. 32 Celsius off the coast of Louisiana, 32 Celsius off the coast of Florida. We have lost some of the heat there. We're not at 33 Celsius like we were before, but I'm telling you folks, the, the entire Gulf right now, mid 80s, upper 80s, close to 90 degrees. And I'm, I, I, I have repeated myself way too many times. It is going to be a big, big problem if we get any storms that move through that portion of the Gulf. Upper ocean heat content is stupendously wild. I mean, uncharted territory. And of course, if we get any named storms, it could be a big problem if the upper level environment cooperates. So how, how warm are we above normal? Well, throughout the much of the tropical Atlantic, we're running about one and a half to two and a half degrees Celsius above the long-term average. 3 Celsius off the west coast of Africa over the Cabo Verde Islands. We're running 2 to 3 Celsius in the north and northeast portion of the Gulf of Mexico. And then up here, whoo, whoo, man, 7 plus degrees Celsius above the long-term average in the northwestern Atlantic. Wow. That's all I got to say. Wow. That is just crazy. I mean, very warm AMO look here. I mean, I don't want to over-exaggerate. If we get a busy season this year, it could end real, really bad. Okay, I'm not saying this means we will have a super busy season. But, I mean, things are there. Okay, well, I'm just telling you. The upper ocean heat content is there. The uh, above average sea surface temperatures are there. It's all lining up. And you can see here, lots of reds, 30 Celsius plus in the Gulf, and 26 Celsius plus in the main development region in the central North Atlantic. This could be one of those seasons we do not want to have. I'm telling you right now. Well, anyways, if you did enjoy today's Hurricane Outlook and discussion on July the 22nd, 2023, it is my honor to bring you these videos on an everyday basis as long as there is an area to watch that could be threatening land. As always, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the like button, share this video with their family and friends on social media, and also leave a comment in the section below um, to let me know how you like this video because I'm going to have another update on the tropics tomorrow.